Hello, thanks for watching. I'm going to make a skull pendant today. Made with rust and tequila sunrise. I'm just going to ball up. A mass or a gather of rust. You can almost see the shape of the back of the skull. Once I get the size I'm looking for, I kind of pause and let it kind of flop on one side. I definitely see the back of the skull at this point. I'm going to take my shears and give it two snips, which are going to become the cheek, the cheeks. One. Again, I might pause for a second, and I'm going to do punty up, put a cold seal there on the back of the head, the beginning of the skull. And sometimes I'll just bonk it off, and sometimes I'll just melt it off. That time it didn't bonk off. So uh, I just cut it off with the torch. And I actually like the way it came out better with a little more material there. And that material is going to become where the upper uh, teeth are formed from. So start to see the back of the cranium and then this is going to be the front of the uh, skull. So, I'm adding the material for the cheeks. I'm going to do a little bit down on the bottom too for the uh, part of the skull where the teeth connect into. When I flatten, you'll notice I try not to ever just hold the paddle in one spot. I always try to rock it back and forth uh, because skulls aren't completely flat. They're kind of rounded, so I always try to kind of round it out. Also, a great little secret is the tweezers make two perfect lines, which are very helpful when you're dividing up a, a head or a skull with the two eye sockets and two nostrils holes. Uh, it's just a real good tool for kind of breaking the piece down into two equal pieces. Uh, this is the uh, bridge of the nose, just the top of the nose. There's a little material there uh, that's part of the skull. And it was a little too flat before that so I just added that material to give it a little dynamic. Again, with the tweezers, I went right under the cheekbones, both on the same angle, so it was, you know, nice and even. Use my tweezers a lot as a shaping tool. Now I'm getting the uh, scalpel, so a little bit more detailed sculpting and shaping. See how I roll my paddle. adding more material for the cheeks, cheekbones, and uh, the top of the eyes. My tool, shaping it out. I 
a lot of times when you lay material uh, it wants to just kind of fold in so I'm pulling that material out of the eye socket so that it looks more realistic Here we go. Basic shape for a skull. Now we're going to get a little finer. And same thing, just uh, getting the material out of the inside of the eye sockets, shaping it out. Look at some skull drawings, some skull pictures. It really helps to have some knowledge base kind of feeding your movements. doing the nose now. Look at what nostril holes look like on a skull. Kind of diamond shaped each one. And they terminate right at about the bridge of the nose. It's a graphite rod, again, reaming out the insides of the eye sockets. I like to rest it on the marver to, I'm not putting pressure on the piece while I'm holding it. fine-tuning the nostrils here the nose cavity Adding some more material here for the, uh, the roof of the mouth. I'm kind of angling it or curling it around so it's not just a flat paddle but more of like a curved radius. I'm going to add some different color for the teeth too. There's kind of the final shaping on the curved uh, part for the roof of the mouth. 
where the teeth go into. I'm just going to kind of get this even molten. I'm just going to wipe it across the top for where the teeth go. Now I'm going to start with the first two teeth, the front teeth, split it in half and then I kind of go off on one side snipping down and then I go back up to the middle and snip down the other way. Helps me to look at it from the front while I'm doing it. And this uh, little shaping with the paddle here kind of finalizes the tooth shape. Uh, on the inside of the roof of the mouth I kind of push it out and round it out to get it to look more realistic. And I'm going to punty up right in the middle of the inside of the roof of the mouth. And a little final sculpting here. Just to give it a little texture, adding a little more material maybe here. Yeah, and nasal cavity area again to make it look a little more realistic. As I'm working on these pieces, they're changing all the time, and some areas I feel just need to be revisited sometimes in order to achieve. Um, where where I'm headed to and make sure it's something that I feel good about so if there's a part before I change the punty on here and do my loop that uh, still is getting my attention I'm gonna go for it so I tighten it up now I'm gonna do my punty and my loop I'm going to gather up a decent amount of glass here for my bale. I'm going to do a tungsten stab through. So I'm going to gather up a pretty good amount. And then I kind of roll it out and lengthen that gather give it that tube bale look and then with my tungsten and the proper heat just pierce it right through till it goes through on one side and then flip it around and do the same on the other side I kind of lift up pull it round it out so that it looks nice and round from all sides Look at it from the top. So it may look great from one angle, and then you turn it around, and it needs some work from the other angle. So always keep it turning. And I give it one final flash, which is just a overall reheat. And I'm gonna bonk it off and toss it in the kiln.
Thank you everyone for watching. And there you have it. A skull pendant. Get over here, you little sucker. Thank you.